Hi, I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live number 52. That means a year of these. <laughs> if they've, they've been weekly, I think I missed once. And uh, so welcome to this, today's broadcast. Today's broadcast is about singing, what are you afraid of? So I want to make sure that uh, my first question to you is, what are you afraid of singing? Uh, just make a comment down in the comment section below. Just let me know. Like, uh, you're afraid of forgetting the lyrics or you're afraid of not hitting the high. What is it you're afraid of with singing? You don't have any fear? I do. I'll tell you more about that in a second. So how's everybody doing today? I want to make sure that you're able to um, hear and see me and be able to respond to these questions. So I'm going to go to my... Um, live chat here and okay wow looks like uh, everything is good I see you're not <laughs> let me see uh, Berno Inferno says uh, hi Chuck all videos all good good to see you and uh, nice to see you guys so you, you can tell that uh, this is new this is continues to get a bit longer and and uh, so I'm in a I'm in I've been cast as Ebenezer Scrooge and uh, this is the beginning of Ebenezer Scrooge. Won't be long and I'll be shaving this part and I'll have these just big chops. Hair's growing out and um, so my character will begin to evolve through the coming weeks. You'll see that. So what are you afraid of? Uh, anyone have, I'm afraid, uh, so hi, hi Joshua Meyer. Joshua says, I'm afraid that my voice will never be world class. You know, join the club, huh? But um, world class, if you say, if you think for a minute about world class, let me just address that for a second. If you think for a minute that 95% of the world singers can't get through the bridge of their voice and into their head voice without cracking, breaking, straining, or going breathy, or breaking in the falsetto, then um, it's very, very likely, Joshua, that you will be able to be world class because uh, Power to Sing, uh, this, this whole website, my whole life is dedicated to helping you do that, is very possible. And uh, I know that by my own experience. So let me hey, say hi to a few folks here. We're going to start in a minute officially uh, for the live broadcast. Uh, just a shout out to uh, Eagle, to Joshua, uh, Subia, Franz Francisco, nice to have you with us today. Berno, Inferno, great to have you here. Um, John, also being judged, uh, he makes the comment on, you know, what are you afraid of? Being judged, yeah, me too. Uh, vibrato can be scary. And... Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. Hi, I'm Chuck Gilmore. It's 2 o'clock, top of the hour, uh, 2 o'clock here in the United States in the state of Utah, and that's Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, welcome to all of you. This is Power to Sing Live number 52, and the topic today is singing, What Are You Afraid Of? Now, this is a really great topic because we all have our fears about singing. And the reason why this is kind of at the top of my mind is I just attended a, a fear workshop this weekend with uh, world-renowned fear specialist Kristen Ulmer, who uh, has written a book entitled The Art of, the Art of Fear. And um, Kristen is uh, is, has been in her her past she for 12 years was the number one extreme female skier in North America and for like three years she was recognized as the top extreme athlete of all different uh, disciplines and so she has had a lot of experience with fear and uh, she had a very exciting and interesting story and uh, I, just before we even begin, I recommend that you grab her book, uh, The Art of Fear. I know it's available on Amazon. 
what's really kind of exciting about Kristen is she happens to live in my state. And so uh, when I read about her story, <clears throat> I was really interested in it. And there's a lot of application to singing. Well, we know we all have fear in our lives. And for us singers, we have some other kinds of fears that non-singers don't really, well, maybe non-singers do have. And that's why they're not singing. So we're going to go dive into, uh, dive deeply into fear here in a few minutes. I want to uh, say hi to some, some more of you who have joined us. Very excited to have you with us. Um, Subia, hi, I think we already said hello. Uh, Khaled, Salim, awesome to have you with us today. Chad, very nice to see you, Chad. Um, Violetta, Violetta. Um, Don Carlson, Papa Max, great to have you with us today, and I'm sure we'll have others join us as well. So, singing. What are you afraid of? Um, well, the first question I want to ask you is, where do you feel? Where do you feel fear? In other words, when you, when, you know, um, thanks, Chad. When you're, when you're frightened, where does it, where does it hit you? You know, I've had, I felt the fear before, just kind of like sweep through me, and I can really feel it. You can, you know, you've heard the phrase in the pit of the stomach. Uh, that's kind of something that I'm familiar with. You feel it in the pit of your stomach, and if it's su a sudden rush of fear, like for me, it starts in the gut and spreads to the chest and and uh, and if it's kind of a gradual fear I can feel it up here in my neck in upper chest into my neck you know and I I can picture myself getting ready to go into an audition and sitting there waiting my turn and feel my heart rate increase and feel that tightness feel the tightness in my chest what about you where do you feel fear? I'd love to hear it just in your comments because uh, it's different for a lot of people. So if you can identify that, I'm really curious as to where do you feel fear? And so um, when, you're, when you feel fear in relationship to singing, um, like is it in the pit of your stomach? Does it sweep through your can you relate to some of the things I talked about? My, if for my wife, her eyes ache. She gets achy eyes. And that's been a part of her life uh, ever since, I mean, we've been married almost 39 years now. And ever since I met her, she's had achy eyes periodically. So anyway, what about you? Really interested in that. Uh, Don Carlson says he feels it in his legs. That's interesting. Um, Crystalis, hi. Uh, when you say me too, is that you feel it in your legs or you're feeling it where, where I've described it? Um, so let's talk a little bit about this, this topic of fear. And one of the, the, the things that Kristen Ulmer, um, again, this is her book, The Art of Fear, where she talks about is this is not about conquering fear. This is not about stopping fear. <clears throat> this is about <clears throat> this is about a, this is a different completely different approach. You know, this isn't about changing your thoughts or uh, any other kinds of things that kind of are, you know, someone said they saw a stop sign that somebody had painted and uh, it's you know, it said stop and then below it said fear. This is really taking an opposite um, approach to fear. And it's kind of based on a Zen approach to uh, living and to, and, and to awareness. And so it's not about getting rid of fear. It's not about pushing it away. It's not about, um, you know, if, if, the, if the voice of fear is like a child, and it's not about pushing that child down into the basement. Um, it's, it's not about changing your thoughts. It's not about conquering fear. 
but rather it is about making friends with fear and the voice of fear. Um, I know that's kind of a, a unique, a unique take on on fear. But if you stop to think about it, <clears throat> how long is it? When did you first recognize fear? And how? And, you know, when's the last time you felt some fear? It's it's virtually, and and I would say probably, unlikely, or next to impossible that fear is never going to be a part of your thinking, of your feeling, and of your life. Okay. So, and and in singing, as much experience as I've had, there's still this element of fear. There's still an element of fear that arises over different things. Um, you know, I ask you, what were you afraid of? Let me tell you some of the things I'm afraid of. I am, I'm, I'll be turning 65 in the next three months. And one of the things that happens a little more often as you age is you tend to get acid reflux. Well, I don't want to lose my voice to acid reflux. <clears throat> I, uh, that, and that's a fear that for a number of reasons. I don't want to lose my voice and not be able to sing, but it could affect my teaching and so forth. And so um, another thing I fear is forgetting my lyrics. And I fear that because I've done that before. And I don't like it. <laughs> I'm, afraid of, I'm afraid of that. Uh, I am afraid of, um, you know, losing, losing the quality of my voice. Uh, afraid of it becoming an older voice or aging and so forth. <clears throat> and there's some other things. Uh, I'm afraid of doing a poor job singing in an audition. Uh, I'm afraid of maybe not being inspiring and and so forth. So, you know, I've got plenty of fears. Well, I'm in a show right now, and so I'm afraid of, um, and I'm playing a, a, a character who's well known in literature, Ebenezer Scrooge. And, and people read the story or they see the play and they expect to be inspired by it, and they expect to have a change of feeling and a change of heart. In the in the uh, in the Christian world, it's uh, some it's a Christmas time story. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> it's a Christmas time story, and it's the story of a man who is uh, a miser, a stingy, selfish miser, who through ex uh, some supernatural experiences uh, begins to see his life and what he has become and what he's lost as a result of his choices and and he has a chance to change and so people are very inspired by that and I'm worried that my performance and my singing and acting is not going to provide that for those people who are coming to see it and you've maybe had that experience where you are going to be singing and you're, you're a little you're frightened or you're afraid that they're not going to uh, like what you do or not not going to respond or feel good about it. So this is something we all face, right? So if if fear is not pushing it away or dry, you know, if, if working with fear is not conquering it or um, eliminating it in your life, <clears throat> what what do we do with it? Um, and so here's some here's some thoughts. In, in essence, rather than getting rid of it or conquering it or killing it off or whatever you want to say, <clears throat> the, the action to take is to make fear your friend. It is, it is um, treating it as a welcome guest. Now, and, you know, when we talk about fear, that is that, like... The voice of fear, the, the feeling of fear, is to allow it, experience it, and welcome it. Because it's very likely, <clears throat> it's very likely that it has something to say 
that's important. If it were a valued employee in the corporation of you, let's say, what voice, what, that what, what would that voice of fear have to say to you? And does that voice have some wisdom to impart? Does it have something to say that, in fact, could be of value to you and um, to, to your, in terms of singing, to your singing or to your performance or to address the specific fear that you have? Well, someone said, um, I'm afraid of, um, you know, I'm afraid of people making fun of me. That's from Valencia, Valen, Valenzaca. Valenzaca or Valen, Valenzaca? Valenzaca. That is such a, something that I can really relate of, relate to people making fun of you when you're singing or performing. And so, okay, let's say that's the voice. That's, you, you welcome that moment, that fear, and, uh, and kind of live with it and, and dwell with it and, um, and speak to it and with it. What wisdom does that fear have for you? Valenzaca, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm, not, I'm probably not getting the emphasis correct on your, your name, but because you mentioned that, can you, can you for a second just listen to that voice of fear and ask it um, what you should do about it and see if there's something more that it has to say. I'll give you an example of something that for me would be forgetting the lyrics. It's a very real fear I have. And so when, when rather than driving that thing out of my head and say, no, I'm going to be very positive about this, I'm not going to, you know, what would be a way that I could welcome that message of fear to me and, and to really like befriend it uh, the, as a voice of a trusted advisor? Okay, so uh, it may have some recommendations for me. Okay, fear. Um, I can feel. I can feel the tightness. I can feel the panic of forgetting, and I'm very frightened of that. I'm frightened to be in front of 520 people or a thousand people or whatever the audience size is going to be, and I'm afraid of feeling like a fool because I have just. Uh, mumbled or forgotten the words, and I have done that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I have done that, and uh, and I don't like the feeling, and I don't like the feeling of disappointing people. Okay, so what recommendation, fear, do you have for me? And so the voice of fear may say something like, "If I became that voice, I'm frightened because I don't want to forget." I don't want to be embarrassed, and I don't want to ruin the evening for people. I don't want to be made fun of, and I don't want to be thought ill of. I'm frightened of that. So here's what I want you to do, Chuck. I want you to use some mnemonic memory devices. I want you to use some tricks to help you memorize even things in the songs or in the scripts that you don't think you need. I want you to, I want you to spend the time on your... Um, on your song, on the lyrics of the song. And I might say parenthetically to you, my listeners, that I really get frightened when it's a fast moving song, when the words and the, you know, and the, the melody, the lyrics are coming so quickly, so fast, that you just have to have them so well memorized, so well a part of you that, you, you know, you just don't forget. What do I need to do then? Use uh, uh, I, I will spend time using word pictures that I create, crazy word pictures or unusual word pictures that help remind me of uh, lyrics that are coming. Um, have any of you tried that? So, for example, one of the lyrics that I have to sing in the song, current show I'm in that come at me very, very fast. And so um, one of the lines is, 
people wanting this, people wanting that, spreading bloody cheer, plucking at your sleeve, holding out the hat, singing in your ear. And so, um, people wanting this, people wanting that, spreading bloody cheer, I don't really have a picture for that. That seems to come off my tongue pretty well. I probably should memorize something. But let me give you the, what I picture in, my, in the second, um, that second phrase. I actually see people plucking at my sleeve, like people plucking the sleeve. I see them holding out a hat, and I see them singing in my ear. Now that's not quite as outlandish as some of the other things that I've done, but I create those word pictures so that um, they, help, they help me create or, or to, to be able to, re, to reach those lyrics quickly. Later on in the same, uh, later on in the same act, uh, something similar where I say, uh, it's my nephew Fred, he wants me to come and dine with him and Ebenezer Scrooge will not do this. And he'll say something like, um, people taking wives, living little lives, cozier than mice. Well, my word picture is, um, he's talking about Sally, his wife, so I just see him taking his wife and shrinking down into a little miniature people, living little lives, and then sitting on top of a wedding cake. Uh, people taking wives, uh, oh yeah, so that's, that's it. T people taking wives, living little lives, so here's a little couple on top of a wedding cake, uh, cozier than mice, okay? So I see them like the size of mice on top of a wedding cake. Um, marrying for love, because they're, uh, they're embraced on the top of a little wedding cake. Push will come to shove. I see them pushed off the wedding cake. Um, marrying for love, push will come to shove. You'll be thinking twice. I don't really have a good picture for that one. Um, but I think of th thinking twice uh, rhymes with ice. So when, when they fall off the wedding cake, I see them landing on um, uh, thinking, uh, you'll be thinking, you'll be thinking twice. Um, so I see this block of ice that we fall on. And uh, then I see us dining at the, you know, sitting down to a table of the block of ice. Um, and, they, and they say, um, and so I get this picture in my mind. So you get the, you get the point. Uh, asking me to dine, breaking open wine, taking no advice. So I see myself sitting at, the, at a block of ice <laughs> dinner table, breaking open wine, and taking, taking no advice. So anyway, these things all come so rapidly, I don't have time to, but if I, if I, mem if I spend the time to memorize like that, then I find that the lyrics become a little more embedded in me, and I'm much less likely. So why do that? Because I'm fr afraid. And so allowing the fear to teach me, allowing the fear to motivate me to do something, to do something active and positive is, is a benefit to me. And so why would I want to drive the fear away? And I'm saying and suggesting to you that you may find that if you'll invite the fear into your, to your mind, you know, allow the fear to be there as a trusted advisor and listen to the voice of fear, that you may get, you might gain some tremendous wisdom from it that will, you know, there's a purpose and the reason why you're experiencing that fear. Now, some of these aren't maybe as easy to deal with as what I've just described, but you've got to, you, you know, you've got to think about that. What is it that you fear? And uh, what is it telling you to do? So let me just check, with, uh, check in with you. I'm gonna uh, just look at my monitor here and see what comments have been made uh, about this topic. And uh, a shout out to a couple other people that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, Dennis, nice to have you with us today. Uh, he says, for me, it's a general anxiety I have because my autism. So he has autism. I don't really understand people often. And especially with singing, it feels like I'm putting myself out there. Yeah, good for you, Dennis. Uh, good for you to put yourself out there. And um, 
I have a grandson who has autism, and I have friends who have uh, had uh, on different spectrum of autism, and sometimes it's challenging, as Dennis has said, for him to understand uh, what people, you know, what they're projecting and what the, to interpret them. And so, uh, good for you. What uh, does that general anxiety, what does that fear teach you about what you might need to do to help you in that? Um, Don Carlson said, just as we destroy hatred with love, we break judgment with confidence. Um, Nice comment. Okay. Yeah, and Don, Don has a kind of interesting comment. He says, the more skilled you get at singing, the more confident you'll be doing it in front of people. Yeah, Seth Rigg says, if it's, if it's easy, you're, it's not hard. You know, if it's easy to do, um, it's not frightening. It's, it's, it, it's, and I, I don't know that that's, com you know, 100% you're not, I guess you're not terrified to do it. Um, there's always going to be, for me, there's always a little bit of fear. Uh, and that fear can translate into some uh, energy, which you have to have when you come out on stage, right? And so the fear can kind of give you a little pump of adrenaline to help you get out there and, and really, you know, really knock it, knock it dead, really, uh, you know, have a great evening of, or a great evening of performing. It could heighten your senses. So you're listening you're listening to, well, in, in, on stage, you're listening to the other actors. You're listening to what's going on. You're, you're in the moment. You, you are the character. You are, you're feeling the lyrics and so forth. It can really be a, a, a great uh, addition. Um, okay, so Dennis K comments, says, I didn't sing for years because of insecurities. Last week, I started singing in an empty train. Hey, good for you, Dennis K. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, sometimes that's what we need to do, put ourselves, but singing really gives you plenty of opportunity to put yourself out there, right? So, Dennis, the next step is to sing with people on the train, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Akujin, nice to have you with us. Akujin Goss. I'm hoping I could see improvement in my voice. Um, we'll get to that in a second here. All right, so just to kind of wrap this topic up, I hope this is a, a new way of thinking for you that you might be able to actually welcome fear. Some people say, you know, I just hate auditions because I feel, I mean, I'm just always so nervous, I'm so scared of them. You know, it's probably not the right approach to take. The, the approach is to take uh, with this is what is fear what is the fear trying to help you understand maybe you're ill prepared you ever thought about that maybe you need to spend more time preparing your audition song or your uh, audition um, dialogue if you're going for a straight play so or perhaps um, I don't know. You just need to explore it. Welcome that voice of fear into your consciousness and uh, make it a friend. Treating it as a welcome, honored guest. Uh, listening to it as a valued advisor. So what wisdom does a voice of fear have to give to you? And what action can you take? So let fear enliven you and help you. Um, okay, other comments here. Barry and Michelle Patterson. What would you say about folks who are not aware of their fear, but it manifests in their bodies? Shaking, trembling lips, shaky leg. That is an awesome question. And that's really kind of what, uh, you know, I'll go back to this Art of Fear, this book. She kind of helps you understand that if, we re if we're always repressing fear and not, and not allowing it, that it will present itself sometimes in an in a inappropriate manner. Let's say you see like this tremendous anger or, or road rage, you know, on the highways or people losing tempers or, you know, 
uh, or having a panic attack from fear. Usually, when it's when it's so so negatively manifesting itself, it's because it's been repressed. We haven't been and the practice of what we're talking about today helps uh, mitigate or reduce this negative manifestation of fear. And so the first step really is, and I'm not an expert in this, Kristen is, but for what I'm learning to apply in my own experiences, the first step is just to notice it. You notice the trembling lips. You notice the shaking legs. Um, you notice the um, yeah. You notice it in the body in some way, and and if you stop to think about most of the time when we're feeling fear, we are feeling something in our bodies. Our body's job is to feel, and so rather than trying to get rid of it or push it away, ask it. What is this? Why? What? What is behind this trembling lip? You know, what are you feeling? Well, I feel fear. And so, you know, what is it you're afraid? So engage that. Oh, welcome that. Welcome that experience. Rather than trying to get rid of it or you know, oh, it makes me so mad when I do that. Don't do that. Welcome it. Invite that experience. Say thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for giving me this feeling that what do you want, what are you afraid of? And, and engage it. What are you afraid of? Do you have a recommendation for me? Do you perceive some things that I can do that will help me not be, uh, to help you not feel as frightened? So, um, Okay, what would you say about folks who are not aware of their fear? And so, uh, so Barry and Michelle Patterson, many of us aren't aware. And uh, the first step is to just become, uh, start, start to look for these moments. And I would say the first thing you want to do is rather than think too much about it, just kind of feel it. If you start to feel something uncomfortable, you know, ask the question. What is that, what am I feeling and what is that feeling? And, tr and try and determine if, is that, am I feeling frightened? A lot of times what we feel, the anxiety, the stress is related. Stress is just another manifestation of something underlying and you're afraid of something. I'm afraid of losing my job or I'm afraid of not making a deadline. Why? Well, because I might lose my job. Or I'm, in singing, I'm afraid of I feeling nervous in my gut because there's this high note that I know I struggle with every single time. And so I've got this anxiety churning the whole time until that moment, you know, and then I'm really terrified of it. And so when I get to it, I tense up, I tighten, I back off, I do all these crazy things. And sure enough, you know, it, uh, what I'm afraid of happens. So we want to be able to tune into it. And, you know, preferably we, turn in, we tune into it before we're there on stage, you know, in front of everybody. And if we really tune in, we'll be sensitive to it. But it's not... But a lot of us are so have so forced it out of our lives that, um, you know, you're right. We just we're not even aware. We know something's crazy or something is screwy, but we don't know why. And the first step is to really be, be kind of tune into your body. And your body's job is to, you know, it feels emotion. We should be feeling emotions, and it might come out in terms of an ache or you know, a upset stomach or whatever. Great, great comment, great question. Okay, so I've got some questions here to, I'm gonna go ahead and address some of the questions that, and my worthy two or three. Uh, assistant, two or three ways. Uh, so not a lot of questions, just some great, great comments. Okay, so here's a, I do wanna just make a comment. Uh, Subia says, I'm afraid of getting judged like I always get this thing in my mind that people listening to me will like my voice or not. 
And that's why I always get nervous and ruin my performance. You know, that's, a, that's very, very real. And I would, I, in my olden days, I'd kind of explain that away. But I think maybe it'd be a good idea to sit down and maybe write out in a journal or something, write out, a com have a conversation with fear. You be you and let fear have its voice. And talk, talk to it. And ask it. What are you afraid of? What's the worst that can happen if people make fun of you or criticize you? Or, you know, ask fear of that and find out what it's feeling. Okay, going on to some questions here about singing, which I'd like to do. I love to sing very much, but I am transsexual. I am a woman with a deep voice, like a baritone. I'm often very little. Uh, I'm often a bit little ashamed because of that. I want to learn opera, singing as a contralto voice, but I come from baritone. I don't know what is possible. I have any tips? Uh, my reg my register break is very deep around middle C. So. So, uh, Violetta, it's likely if you're as close to middle C on your, on your uh, bridge um, and you're coming from baritone, it's likely that the actual bridge, you're starting to feel something, but the actual bridge is around the C. My sense is that it's very possible that if you learned to bridge, that is bridge f E, F, F sharp, and, and we're learning, would learn how to go from, um, so treating your voice as if it were baritone or tenor, uh, going from the chest register through the bridge up into head, you may find that you have a much higher register or some much higher notes than you actually thought. In my case, I thought my voice ended at the E above middle C. And you can see this, uh, there's a number of different, I talked about this last week, actually, in my live broadcast, number 51. You may want to revisit, uh, revisit that if you haven't seen it. But I extended my range over an octave. And last week, I think I sang all the way up to the high G. I don't think I could do that today, or at least I vocalized. <clears throat> you may discover that you have a lot more upper notes than you realized. And, uh, and that comes about through the bridging process. Now, I'm not an expert on vocal, vocal change from the standpoint of coming from the uh, transsexual uh, um, challenges that you face in that transition. Uh, I know there are ENTs, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors who probably are, are very qualified and maybe sometimes even specialize in uh, working with you. But I know as a singer, you may find that you have a much higher range than you think. I did, and I had no idea that I did. But uh, one of the things that, one of the exercises you can begin to do is That takes you through from your chest through the bridge all the way up to the uh, G high or the high C rather, or the high D above high C. Can't do bubbles very well when I have a beard. I have to do the tongue trill, but um, right there, I just went to the high D above high C. That's all the way through the female first bridge. And so um, I would explore that, that possibility. Now, I, uh, I have some exercises on powertosing.com. And let me just take a moment right now to uh, share that with, with you. And there, because usually this happens with um, other questions, too. So let, let, me, let me show you um, quickly, all of my guests today, if you go to powertosing.com, you can take the power test, and so you record, you press record, so it starts recording your voice, and you start, uh, and you press start playing, and it plays uh, accompaniment. And so you would sing along, ah, and I'll, it'll take you all the way through your bridge. For the guys, you end up here, 
for the female voice, it ends up up here, and it takes you through your first bridge. Then uh, you take, uh, you, you replay it and listen, and you answer the questions here and submit the answers, or submit the, question, uh, the answers to the questions, and within a few minutes or less, you get your vocal type. Or you can send me the recording, which is possible. Send me the recording and I, I'll listen to it and give you your vocal type. Once you find your vocal type, you go to the Knowledge Center. In the Knowledge Center, you'll find four vocal types listed at the top of the page. Pull chest, high larynx, light chest, no chest, flip, falsetto, mix. Let's say your uh, pull chest, high larynx, which is about 90% or more, some t as far as I can see, probably 90%. So on each of these pages, you'll get a video about what it is, what is your vocal, you know, what's pull chest, high larynx, or what's light chest, no chest, and so forth. Exercises specifically for your vocal type, examples of people, professionals, who are that vocal type, uh, and that's not a positive thing. It's just that they, tend, like in this video, about five or six of these artists have actually had surgery on their voices because they pull their chest voice and they have a high larynx. Then there are free exercises that you can uh, download and start practicing those, and they will help you learn to bridge. They'll help you learn to go from chest into your head voice with, uh, with, uh, without the, the difficulties of pulling the chest voice or without the difficulty of going too light or flipping in the falsetto. So I recommend that to all, uh, for any of you who haven't visited that before. Um, okay, done. Because I'm afraid of singing anything, the C sharp, C sharp to G sharp area without cracking. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, what I used to call the danger zone. <laughs> but, uh, so Don, what happens is if you're talking about the C, middle C, C sharp, <clears throat> to the G sharp above middle C, obviously that's just below and just above your first bridge. And that, that will and can become more solid and um, more comfortable with time. Papa Max, hi, greetings uh, from London. Number one fear is uh, getting other singer, letting other singers down when singing harmonies. Yeah, <clears throat> that's uh, particularly challenging when you're in a band or in a choir and so forth. Uh, or in a small group, or maybe barbershop, I mean, like imagine a barbershop quartet and one of you out of harmony. Um, you know what? If, so I would listen to the voice of fear and ask it, what's your advice? What would you, what would do you, what would you need for me to do to be less fearful? And see what wisdom there is behind that. I can think of some things, but I'm probably not as smart as fear. Um, I'm scared of people not liking my voice and thinking it don't sound good. Yes, I'll tell you a way I kind of handle that. But I, I, I'm kind of feeling that maybe that's not the best way. So, um, but I remember saying to somebody once that I really love Barbara Streisand's voice. Barbara Streisand, I think, is one of the greats, you know, <laughs> just great singer. And they said, I don't like her voice at all. I thought, are you kidding me? You don't like Barbara Streisand's voice? And then I thought, wait a minute, if that person doesn't like Barbara Streisand's voice, <clears throat> why would I think that everybody should like my voice? <laughs> it's just not normal. I don't like everybody's voice. The best singers in the world, you know, let's say, uh, Pavarotti, who was like one of the greatest of all time, uh, greatest tenors in opera. Uh, not everybody likes his voice. I could say probably half of you don't like his voice. Well, what makes you think that everybody's going to like your voice? So I began to accept the fact that there's going to be a percentage because this is life. 
If there's 500 people in the audience, 100 people are going to say, I don't like his voice at all, and I wish I wasn't here. Another 100 are going to say, hey, it's okay, I'll take it or leave it. Another 100 will say, I don't know him, you know, I, you know, I don't know him from Adam, so I'll listen to see what happens. Another 100 are going to say, oh, I've always liked his voice in the past. Another 100 are going to say, I love his voice. I'm so glad I'm here tonight. So I've got all of this happening here. I've just, I've just learned to accept that. If I get one or two people to come up afterwards and say, oh, I love your voice, that's all I need. All the rest could be hating it, but I've just got somebody that likes my voice. And that's really who we're singing for, isn't it? We're singing for the people who love your voice. And there'll be people who love your voice. Trust me. Sibia says, uh, being judged is the worst thing, and that's why I'm afraid to start my YouTube channel. Um, ask fear. Why, you know, what is it you're afraid of? One of the things you might want to ask fear is, what's the, what's the worst that can happen, fear? What is the very worst? And um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is that to occur? Um, I mean, probably the very worst thing would be someone would come burn your house down and, and uh, burn you up too, you know. Um, how likely is it? You know, really engage fear. Don't try and overcome it. Don't try and talk it away. Don't even fight it. Just embrace it. See what happens over a period of time. Just notice it. Just notice it for a while. Acknowledge it. Recognize it. See what happens. Papa Max Fear. That's cool. Spine locks up, gut goes tight, voice dries up. Yep. <laughs> Dennis uh, gets sweaty, but mostly I feel it in my right leg. Isn't that interesting? It'll start vibrating quite a lot when I get nervous. I probably shaky. So I'll need to get uh, put my leg, uh, uh, my weight on my left leg. Yeah. So, you know, rather than, you know, in addition to doing those things, ask yourself, what is it about, what is fear trying to tell you here? What is it that's fear trying to tell you? Be aware of it. Embrace it. Live with it. Eh, welcome it. See what happens. Slim Shady. Slim, nice to have you with us today. Uh, I feel so cold. I feel so cold on my arm. I, w I wonder... What, uh, and I also wonder if, what if I forget the lyrics? Yeah, that's, I can relate. Um, I feel like, Don says, I feel like not bending my knees enough and they'll, they'll lock, and that they'll lock. Also get a chill up my spine. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Layla says, afraid of not hitting the high notes in the mixed voice. Yeah, so, um, you know, you might want to just, sometime in the next little while. Just keep aware and keep noticing this fear. You might want to start asking it some questions like, what advice do you have for me? What are you afraid of? Give me all of them. Just tell me deep down what is it you really fear? And uh, what, what counsel do you have? What advice do you have? My guess is you're going to most of the time not really hear, say, hear fear say, stop doing it. You're probably going to get some great ideas from it. So uh, Acugen says, uh, I'm hoping I can see improvement in my voice once I get these possible nodes taken care of. I want to try out for the voice. My fear is not doing something right. Yeah, so Acugen, there's really, it is very helpful to go to the doctor because worse than fear is unknown. Once you know, even if it's negative, even if you have, even if it's worst case, once you know the anxiousness goes away, then you can start making a plan to correct it. So I'd say get to the doctor as soon as you can um, because not knowing is worse than knowing. Don Carlson says at karaoke, uh, the KJ is. Uh, has taught me to sing without, it, with, uh, without a drink first by putting me up 
before I have a chance to order one. Okay. I'm going to have to think about that a minute. Then it says, uh, not if people would, uh, let's see, not sure if people would enjoy that. Okay. Um, Subia comment is, I think I cannot do an audition ever. What to think when you go for an audition and then the next is, uh, and then and then next is your turn. How to forget about your fear at that time? Try not forgetting about it. Try embracing it and kind of enjoying it. And uh, maybe like open arms and like welcome it. Take it in with you next time you audition. And see what happens. I don't know. Um, Subi says, I'll ruin all my performance by getting nervous in front of the audience. I can't help it. Yeah. Um, one of the things you might enjoy on my website here, I don't have it in front of me here, but I have a, a, a couple of videos where John Lennon forgot the lyrics. They were performing on top of a hotel. It's like the end of their career. It's like the, one of their last performances, uh, public performances. And John Lennon forgot the <laughs> lyrics. And he, you know, and the other, the other you know, Paul was looking at him, and George was kind of smiling, and and uh, and the next verse he got it, you know, and he looked at the guys as he was singing, as he was singing the right, you know, the right lyrics, and they were all laughing and smiling, and uh, <laughs> guess what? The world didn't come to an end. Uh, and there's another video there too with um, uh, I forgot her name right off the bat, but Broadway star uh, Emmy or. Uh, Grammy, Emmy, Tony Award winner, and she was in a sound like an aud, you know an auditorium of people doing a live thing, and she forgot the words to her song. <laughs> and it wasn't the end of the world. She still got a career. She's still performing everywhere. So um, you know, so again, I would say have a have a conversation with fear and get uh, and get get intimate with it, and see what what it can offer you. Um, okay, so just wrapping up here, i got a couple things. Uh, Lequack, hey, nice to have you with us today. How to sing in head voice. I tried all the exercises, but I don't feel like I'm ever singing in head voice, even when I reach the A4. What's the problem here? It's, uh, if the problem is you're not singing in head voice, the problem is you're not singing in head voice. You're singing in chest or you, you've gone into falsetto. That's the only other choices, right? Boy, well, I said, ah. I'm just pulling my chest voice up. If I said, ah, that's just falsetto. So somewhere in between there is, um, is what you're looking for. So I've mixed up through the bridge, and then it's pretty much just a head voice there. So that's your, your that would be my head voice, and um, it's likely that you just haven't had enough experience with it or enough training. And I would recommend more training and more experience so that you can do it without pulling, with and, and do it without falsetto. And uh, as you learn to do the bridge, and you'll start learning to mix in that bridge, then uh, that same feeling will carry up to the high A, let's say. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to accomplish your goal. Uh, what's the difference between tenor and baritone? How to classify? Uh, I would say go to my website and watch the video on vocal classification. You can search it in the Knowledge Center under the categories. Search vocal classification. There's a whole video on that. Uh, Dennis K. Can, uh, K. N. I heard somewhere where you can get a high voice back from before puberty. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's again what we're, once you learn the bridge. Oh. So you can access that, uh, that higher voice that we had 
before before you go through your vocal change. And it's, I didn't know that, but yeah, that's what bridging does. It helps you get in your head voice. <clears throat> and it can be strong and powerful, or it can be light um, and easy like that. So Papa Max says, what do you do when the, when the emotion of the song makes you afraid? You'll falter. You know what? Um, that's a great question. And I don't know that I have a great answer for that. I probably need to kind of think that through with the help of fear. Right now, what I try and do is, is I go to the edge where I can feel the emotion without going over the edge. Me personally, when I sing and I start to cry, my larynx goes up through the roof of my mouth and into my nose, and I can't say a thing. I can't make a peep. <laughs> I don't think it's really doing that, but it feels like that, right? I just get choked up, literally. I just can't make a sound. So I have to be a little careful that I don't go over the edge with the emotion. I'd like to learn how to sing one day while I'm crying. Maybe fear could help me with that. Dennis K says, I did the vocal test, was quite surprised, tested out his flip falsetto, and then you answered me and said I was pole chest high larynx. That happens quite a bit. When you do the quiz and you answer the questions, it's going to, and you flip, it's going to give you flip falsetto because it can't, the compu answering the questions the, can't tell you why you flipped. When I hear it, and if I hear the reason why you flipped was because you, your larynx was coming up and you were pulling the chest voice too high, then I will say, you're pulled chest high larynx. In reality, you're both. But what caused it, what caused it was the high larynx and the pulled chest. That's what caused the flip falsetto. So deal with that, and the other one will take care of itself. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, so um, I got a note here from uh, Shivala, uh, Shival, Sh Shivashish. It says, big fan, sir, can you sing please now? Um, and I'm not sure, there's a note here that says Adele. I don't really have, I'm not sure what that means, sorry. But I don't have any Adele songs to sing. Oh, the star, the star that was uh, on Broadway that, yeah, it's not Adele, it's, um, sing a song, I don't really, you know. Um, yeah, so I, uh, you know, it's five minutes till three, uh, the hour, and I've got to wrap this up. Um, you know, I <clears throat> I sang uh, for about two hours last night in rehearsal, and so I'm a little bit on the, and I went to bed really late, so I'm not in greatest voice, but um, you know, part of the problem with live broadcasts is that if you sing something that's copyrighted, they'll just turn you off and they won't let you broadcast anymore so I'm a little concerned about that and uh, so the song that I would sing or songs that I would sing in a live broadcast setting they let you do it on YouTube you know but for some reason they're really picky about live broadcasts at least so far but um, all I would say is I'm just gonna sing a phrase If I said, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, nobody knows my sorrow, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, glory, hallelujah. Thanks, you guys. Love and appreciate you. Very wonderful to have you with us today. And... Um, Please watch for the uh, video that's going to be released this Friday or Saturday. Um, I've, I've kind of lost 
a little bit of traction on the actual release time because I'm in rehearsals every night. It's just uh, it's just preventing me to for you know getting things done as fast as I want to. But this uh, Friday or Saturday, I'll be releasing another video uh, on a topic of of great interest for all of us singers. So thanks for joining me. This is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live. Uh, you can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. I'll see you inside the next video. Thanks.